Hey, what's up everyone? Happy Friday. Welcome to another episode of the SEO Video Show. Today's special guest is Vasco Montiero. Hello, hello. We already have him in the Welcome back, everyone. ready to go. Today's topics, we'll be talking about how to reverse engineer SEO strategies and how to start your SEO marketplace. How to launch maybe some tools, some good stuff. I mean, I have my own tool. Maybe I can ask you some quick tips on launching it as well and getting some tips on growing my user base. For sure. Oh, yeah. Bell, Don't be shy, guys. I see a few of you already in the live chat. Be sure to say hi. Let's see, who already came Stephanie, by? Stephanie, Lucy, Fletcher. Stefan, my man. Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. <laughs> Fletcher, yo, yo, like yo. <laughs> well, what was that, Vasco? <laughs> I was saying you got the whole soundboard there. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have Lucy. What's up? Hi, guys. Stream Elements bot is in the building. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, guys. Happy Friday, y'all. We see Luther just coming in. Hi, hi. What's up, everyone? What other sounds do you have? Show me, uh, show me some more sounds. Oh, I got a bunch. We'll, you'll, you'll see them throughout the, the, uh, <laughs> through the um, uh, show. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's go, guys. Happy Friday. Gonna post it on Twitter as well. We got to do it. Oh, yeah. Be awesome. Victor says, yo, what's up, Dre and Vashko? What's up, what's up? Thank you for coming. It's my first uh, interview, I guess, so if uh, it's not the best. Oh, uh, man, you can do good. You can do good. I see your videos. You do good. <laughs> Love them. <Yeah. laughs> How's your um, course coming along? Did you finish that yet, or are you still working on it? Uh, I never actually ended up starting it properly, you know, because... Recording a course, mm -hmm. if you want to do it properly, it can take a lot of time, right? Yeah. So hopefully, I'll start it uh, next month. We'll see. There you that go. Great, so yeah. But, uh, we'll see. Kobe says, what's up, Vasco? What's up, Kobe? There you go. Glad to see you here. It's so interactive, this. i never done anything like this before. <laughs> yeah, it's a live show, my man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you spill the beans and get give some secrets out, it's out there in the internet. <laughs> yeah, it's forever online. Yep. <laughs> Hello from Seattle, Washington. Hello, Carol. <laughs> All right, guys, oh, we got uh, about six more minutes to go. Today's topic just will be after yeah. Matt Diggity, so we got to do a great show. <laughs> yeah, hard to that. He, he was on last week. He was talking about his SEO business yeah. as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's the SEO show, so got to talk SEO. Ah, I see Gabriella from LinkedIn, TGIF, oh. Monamil. Yeah, me. You're on LinkedIn as well. Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn right yeah, now. It's live are. on LinkedIn. But the thing is, I can't, I can't really bring in comments. I mean, I kind of can. Like, see. Yeah, I, could, I can't bring in comments from the LinkedIn because it's not part of my um, like software that I use here. So it's kind of like, I kind of have to go back and forth. Yeah. Carol Fry. Hopefully I'm saying your name well. Uh, from Seattle. Cool. Yep. Cool, cool. If you're just joining in, today's special guest is Vasco Montiero. We'll be talking about 
how to reverse SEO, reverse engineer SEO strategies. If you've seen his YouTube channel, you see that he breaks down a lot of SEO strategies. So if you want to do that for yourself, get some step-by-step -step tips on how to do that and figure it out for any site that you want to do. And of course, we're going to talk about the vetted SEO marketplace where you can get all your SEO actions and tactics and goodies. Yep. We're going to spill all the beans. We're going to all the secrets. A la carte. Yeah, you get all a la carte over there. You pick and choose. A nice crowd coming in. Love it. Don't be shy, guys. Be shy. Say hi in the live chat. Hello. How do you see how many people are on? I think we have like about 20 people right now watching. Oh, cool. 20 people and only five commenting or six. Six, seven. Come on, oh, no. One, two. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Don't be shy. <laughs> Yeah, I get some people that I would, they say they watch the show and they're on and then they'll comment and they said, oh yeah, I watch every week. I was like, yeah, well, you should say hi. <laughs> Let me know who you are. Yeah. I guess I'm going to ask a question to the audience then. Uh, I'm from Portugal. Who here has been to Portugal before out of the 21 people? Or I guess 22. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Who's been to Portugal, guys? Don't I'm be shy. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're um, away from the computer waiting to start in three minutes. <laughs> Maybe. Or maybe they're typing a super long paragraph of their experience in Portugal too. <laughs> Oh, we got another we got no more people joining come on guys don't be shy say hi in the live chat let me know if you've been to portugal what's your favorite wine or uh what, what yeah. what's the kind of wine it's more of a oh no, we do have a lot of great porto, wine. porto right porto is that from portugal porto. where sorry, what's for you? porto wine That's yeah portugal. porto wine yeah yep one of the best wines in the world oh according to portuguese at least <laughs> Hey, Brian, what's up, man? Thanks for joining. Brian, what's up, Dre and Vashko? This will be a gooder. Yes, sir. Yep. Brian, so have you been to Portugal? We're trying to see who's been to Portugal. This is where Vashko is calling from. There. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm gonna put you on mute for right now, and then about eight minutes in, I'm gonna unmute you, unmute you and then introduce you. All right. Sure. Okay. Cool. No, Brian has not. Rob says reverse engineering things can be good shortcuts. Hey. Eh? Yep. Welcome, Rob. All right, guys, we got less than one more minute to go. Today, we'll be talking about how to reverse engineer SEO strategies. If you watch Vashko's channel, you can see a bunch of case studies that he does. We'll learn how to do that for ourselves. And we'll also talk about how he started the SEO marketplace, vetted. So if you have uh, any interest on starting your own SEO business tools, or marketplace, we'll get all the tips. Ooh. 
Hold on, hold on, hold on, guys. Let me start this correctly. Let me get back here. <laughs> Let me make this sure we start this correctly here. Get it started, no delay, let's work. Wanna see you be an SEO expert. Paul Andre Devera, steady dropping knowledge. Over 15 years in the game, so he knows all about it. Master the art of SEO, you will be amazed. Time to get your brand off page to on page. Dropping knowledge, legendary for sure. Whether you're just getting started, a self employed entrepreneur. Yeah, let's go. Subscribe to the SEO video show. Hey, 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 welcome to another episode of the SEO video show where SEO is alive and fun. My name is Paul Andre Devera. AKA Dre, and I cured SEO videos released in the past week into about one minute clips. My favorite part of the show is when I get to introduce my guest. And my guest this week is the founder of Vetted Marketplace, Vasco Montiero. Before we get started, let's say what's up to everyone in chat. I see Brian, Rob, Carol, Kobe, Victor, Stefan, Fletcher, Lucy, Luther. Welcome, welcome everyone. Please support the channel by liking and subscribing. Now let's get on with the show. Hey Dre, what two things do SEO preschoolers have at lunch break? Cookies and link juice boxes. Google released a new way to report search quality issues with a new user feedback form. Now you can report spam, paid links, malicious behavior, low quality, and other search quality issues, all in one improved form. They also added a way to bulk submit feature, and you can now submit five pages that violate the same policy in one report. If you participate in NARC SEO, you have a valuable tool to report your spammy or even non-spammy competitors. <laughs> all right, here is a helpful SEO tip uh, using Google Keyword planner by seaside pbc let's check it out and i want to find things that are related to farmhouse decoration so i enter six keywords here so what we're going to do is come over here and click on get results so one of the problems with keyword research tools when you enter six keywords here it gave me 5031 keyword ideas so just looking at some of the keywords i entered you can see there's a lot of a search volume but as we come down here you can start to see some of these different keywords these are all really good keywords to target, and they're definitely keywords that I want to target within my blog, but some of these are pretty obvious keywords to target, and a lot of these I already have pages for. So we're trying to find things that are a little bit unique and different. The way that you can go about doing that is after you enter all your keywords in here, instead of using the keyword view over here on the right-hand side, what we're gonna do is change this to group view. Essentially what they're showing us are different ad groups that we can create. So if we come down here and we scroll down to group view, you're gonna see all of these different options that they give us. So we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom. They give us 534 different grouped ideas. Now the reason why I like using grouped ideas is you're going to find things that are very random here, like cow decor, farmhouse cow decor. I don't have that page on my website. If we come down here, hallway decor, that's another page I don't have on my website. Kitchen island decor. So if we click on the drop down, they'll actually show you the average monthly search volume for all these different keywords. Using group view to find content ideas is something new to me, and I will definitely use this in the future to even cluster keywords and get some new content ideas. So be sure to check out, that's in Keyword Planner and actual Google Ads. How to understand language models and semantic connections within them by Corey Goober. Let's check this one out. You might be telling the same thing in two different ways. For instance, if your search query that you are targeting is financial advisor and family connection, in this case, you should be using this sentence. Financial advisor helps families to achieve financial independence. In this case, you see that actually the heaviest concept here is advisor. And now I say the same thing, same meaning with a different word order and compositionality. Families achieve financial independence with the help of financial advisor. Now we see that actually families are the heaviest term here. And this time you can target a query like family plus financial independence here. So if the query that you are targeting has the financial advisor in it, you should use this sentence. If it has family context heavier, you should be using this sentence. And I call this relevance configuration. 
So both of these sentences are helpful at the same level, but the relevance changes, responsiveness changes. So you need to understand this specific context at the same time. Corey is on another level when it comes to semantic SEO. So be sure to check out his episode on, on the SEO video show for more info. How to control your online reputation through digital PR by Dennis Consorte on CaliCube. Let's check this out. Now. So uh, as Jason said, you don't always have control over third party information, but you sure can influence it. And if you use digital PR to reach out to journalists, to reach out to bloggers, to reach out to podcasters and other people of influence, then in fact, you, you are able to control a lot of the information that shows up on your page in branded search. So uh, I believe that digital PR is a tremendous tool when it comes to branded search. It's gonna give you so much control over what does show up. And in addition, you can look for different gaps in the content and see how you can fill them. So if, if you were to Google yourself, uh, as Jason Googled me earlier, uh, you might see, oh, you know what? I, I see some blog posts come up, but I don't see a lot of articles. Or I see podcasts come up, but I don't see a lot of uh, quotes in top tier magazines. So think about how you can leverage digital PR to reach out to influential people and publications and so forth so that you can fill all of those gaps and give people a really complete picture of who you are. Another use case for digital PR is link building. Let's check out this one out by the latest video by Authority Hackers. Let's check out. Now, the newish kind of kid on the block for link builders is digital PR. For some reason, journalists at big publications just don't really care much about your AI survey statistics, but they will go crazy if you strap a heart monitor on a dog, tell it I love you and measure its pulse. Seriously, look at Canine Cottages. They did exactly this. And they got over 200 high quality links to that one piece, including from sites like People Magazine, Country Living and Yahoo. Now, another good tactic is to bait local newspapers by creating some kind of list or ranking of different cities on something. It can be as simple as ranking the best airports in the world as money.co.uk did. They landed 93 links from local newspapers whose airport appeared in their rankings. Try getting those links from guest post outreach. Do you know where you can get some digital PR links? On Vetted. This brings me to my favorite part of the show. Please ask questions on the topic and I will address them in the order that they are received. Please support the channel by liking and subscribing while I get things ready. Bosco has a master's in industry, engineering, and management. He's been doing SEO since 2015 and currently has an agency. He runs a successful YouTube channel and manages private SEO as a Facebook group called Bosco's SEO Tips. He is the owner of Connect, an online academy and community providing search marketing training and software for clients around the world. Please welcome the founder of Vetted SEO Marketplace, Bosco Montiero. Vasco, my man, welcome to the show. Well, <laughs> this is a, a big intro. Thank you. <laughs> of course, of course. Everyone, let's give a round of applause. Thank you, everyone. All right, Vasco, this is the first thing I ask all my questions, um, all my professionals that come on here in one minute or less. How does Vasco get ranking on page one of Google? I guess I'll give the cliche answer is uh, just test, test, and test because uh, different things work for different niches, different Googles. For example, I'm from Portugal. The things that work here don't work very well in the US. So yeah, this just test, test and test because you're going to fail. You're going to learn what, what works, what doesn't work. And uh, that's how at least I've done it so far. Been working great. So yeah, test, test, then test again. That's uh, my answer. Love it. First knowledge bomb of today. <laughs> let's let's rewind this. Okay, hold on. Let me rewind this. <laughs> Take us back to 2015, Vashko. Take us 2015 when you first got into SEO. I mean, how'd you get first? How'd you get first into it? So you might know this person. His name, his name is Alex Becker. Have you heard of him? Yes. Yes. So I was just browsing YouTube and I saw this video from him, uh, which was on rank and rent. So essentially, uh, 
creating a site, ranking it, then renting it out to businesses uh, across the country. Mm -hmm. And so I, I thought, huh, why don't I try to do this uh, but in Portugal? And uh, yeah, I started with a dentist site and um, that's how I got into it. Essentially, I wanted to make some money mm -hmm. and uh, I saw the rank and rent model as valuable because I was not ranking the client's site. I was ranking my own site. So I had the asset on my hand. So if for some reason they would stop paying me, mm -hmm. I could just rent them out to another different uh, to a different company. So that's how I got into it. Alex Becker. <laughs> love that. Love it. So what actually like made you like more um, like interested is what, what part of SEO kind of made you like just want to keep on go, go full force on it, even starting a whole business on it. I, I won't give you the, the bore, boring answer. I mean, money is great, right? Mm -hmm. I'm in business to make yeah. money, but uh, I like the, the testing. I like the unpredictability. I like the fact that it's a very competitive industry. And uh, I like the fact that you have to test different things, right? You always have to be testing. There's no one straight road to the goal and different roads lead to the same goal. So I like the part of it. I like the challenge. So yeah, it's mainly it. It's all right to show me the money. It's show me the money, guys. All right, all right. So I want, let's get into like more of some of the like, um, other ways you learned. So was it just Alex Becker? Were you like listening to anyone else? Were you going to any websites? I mean, you said you're testing, testing, testing. But I mean, was there anyone else that you're kind of like paying attention to? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, the the industry big ones like Matt Diggity. Um, I, I used to watch him a lot. I'm not a big fan of reading content, so I wasn't a big fan of Search Engine Journal and all those. Not that they're mm -hmm. bad, but I, just not for me. I like to consume video content. Um, but I would say the biggest one was for sure Alex Becker. And he had, back in the day, something called Sourceway, which I, I bought his course and all that. Um, so yeah, he was the main, main influence for sure. Love that. Okay, let's get into the also, first topic. Also, sorry, sorry oh. to cut you off. Oh, no. One thing that's super valuable as well is I try to surround myself with smarter people than myself, so other SEOs, and I do learn a lot from them as well. So that's also a valuable thing. Love it. <laughs> knowledge bomb right there. Follow knowledgeable people. Okay, let's get right into um, our first topic of today. Uh, one of the topics that we want to talk about is like how to, like when you, when, when I watch your videos and your YouTube channel, you do a lot of uh, case studies. You do a lot of like reverse engineering of popular websites, of uh, finding out their SEO strategies. I mean, I think this is a great way to like uh, understand other your competitors, where people have competitors, and we want to um, get started on that. So I would like to ask ask you like i mean can you kind of explain the concept of like reverse engineering as uh sites seo strategy uh yeah i don't think there's always a a a path that i follow every single time mm -hmm. i guess i'll start with the first thing which is finding the businesses right mm -hmm. who am i going to do a case study on and what i do is simply i follow the money right for example i did one on airbnb why because they're the biggest company in the world for um accommodation rentals and so i thought hmm let me take a look at their business and let me take a look at how much of their traffic comes from organic search engines. Turns out it is a lot. Mm -hmm. So then from there, you just break it down. I use a bunch of tools, for example, Ahrefs. Uh, I have my own tool called Campaigns or Cafe, uh, similar web. Um, there isn't one centralized tool that gives you everything. You got to mm -hmm. search for all the tools, dig into the site, dig into the pages and really think of yourself as I guess an employee of the business to try and understand how they thought about it. And yeah, that's, that's how I do it. At least I try to immerse myself into the business and the strategy that they're doing, I guess. Yeah. All right, guys, first merge yourself into the business of the site. You want to uh, take a look at and uh, do a reverse engineer. So I want to go into like, how do you find out and see if it's actually a site has a good SEO? I mean, how do you determine this site has a good SEO strategy? I mean, the, the main thing is, I guess this is a bit of a cliche answer, but it's if the site um, satisfies the user's search intent, right? Let's say, for example, for Airbnb, since we started mm -hmm. with that example, mm -hmm. if I search for rent a house in location, if Airbnb shows up, it's most likely because, of course, they're a very strong brand and all that, but they're satisfying my search intent. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's what I do. It's SEO, you know, is quite simple. It's mm -hmm. not easy, but it's quite simple. So, so yeah. Love that. So I'm, let's kind of walk us through it. One of your examples here, because I mean, let's go into like let's let's take uh, Airbnb for example. I mean, could you like kind of walk walk us through your research of, of this particular site of yeah. like analyzing it? Sure. So first things first is again, like I said, I start with evaluating where the traffic comes from. Because yeah. if it mainly comes from paid advertisement, most likely they're not investing too much in SEO. So first things first is I saw that 
a lot of the traffic was coming from uh, search engines, right? Then mm -hmm. I went and looked at, okay, so where is this traffic coming to? going to, sorry, which of these pages on our site, because they have a bunch of pages, are getting the most traffic, right? Mm -hmm. What I found for this specific example were these uh, programmatically SEO generated pages. So for example, uh, house rentals in location, right? House rentals in New York City, mm -hmm. apartment rentals in, well, everything was all the same, right? Age one was the same, the layout of the page was the same, the FAQ on the bottom was the same. So all these pages were somewhat programmatically generated, right? Mm -hmm. And these pages, which satisfied the search query, um, rent X, the X being house, apartment, um, cabin, um, all that in location, were popping up, popping off, popping up for a mm -hmm. bunch of different keywords. Um, so I kind of, sorry, I kind of got lost, but that's what I first noticed mm -hmm. what they're doing. Something else super interesting that, that they're doing is they're capitalizing on trends. So for example, yeah, you can rent an apartment, yeah, you can rent a house, but uh, things like uh, yurts, like cabins, like tree houses, um, mm -hmm. school buses, they noticed that these things were becoming a lot popular. So they created these uh, unique stays on their site. So now if you search for rent a school bus or rent a yurt, they have optimized pages for these search intents that are somewhat recent. People are recently searching for those. Mm -hmm. uh, they also have, for example, for luxury um, um, houses, for example, I think it's luxury.airbnb.com or airbnb.com for slash luxury. They're targeting a whole different market, market sorry, for the luxury stays. That's in Bali, I don't know, some places in Africa. Um, mm. I, th I guess you, you somewhat, sometimes you kind of get lost because it's such a big company with such a huge uh, marketing budget and they, they do so much. Um, and even I, I kind of got lost now, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess I think I answered your question. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, no, no. So um, let's, let's take it back. I'm kind of rewind a little bit because, I mean, you said you, you'll find a site with, um, if they have good organic traffic. I mean, what are some tools? That, how would you know if they have good organic traffic? How do you know if it's not just ads, right? So, I mean, like, how do you actually even identify that the site has a good organic traffic? I guess for, for a site like Airbnb, um, mm -hmm. it is a, a business where the user is actually searching for it. Mm -hmm. Yes, you might be scrolling through Facebook and an ad might pop up uh, for an apartment to rent in whatever place, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a much more um, buyer, buyer intent kind of uh, purchase, right? So mm -hmm. you would assume, uh, you could assume that Airbnb got, um, would be a more organic search traffic kind of business. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, I just use similar web, similarweb.com, mm -hmm. the free, free version works fine because they break it down by paid, organic, social, all that. So that mm. works fine. Yeah. Got it. Similar web, guys. Similar web. So that's a cool uh, tool there. So, I mean, w I mean, of course, when you're doing research, you have a bunch of other tools. So, I mean, can you kind of go through your tool set of like kind of like really analyzing all your stuff, like how you're determining like the certain keywords or, you know, even the how you how you know which one are the top pages that are ranking and like all that good stuff? Yeah, I guess the, the classic one, which everyone uses is Ahrefs. Uh, it's um, not for everyone because it can be expensive, but mm -hmm. it gives you every single thing you need to do in a site evaluation. Uh, I mean, it's every, everything is there, even keyword research. Mm -hmm. So that's the one I use the most. Right now, I've been trying to use my own, mm -hmm. which is very far, far away from Ahrefs, it's called Campaigns of Cafe, mm -hmm. but it gives you enough info. And um, all these tools are great. Ahrefs is great, SEMrush are great, but uh, you cannot just rely on the tools. You gotta just, you gotta also go into the site. Mm -hmm. And one thing I also like to do is, which is what I do with uh, my SEO clients. Um, for example, when I'm developing a strategy, I don't just ask the client, oh, tell me which keywords you want to rank for, because that's wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, what I do is imagine I'm one of your clients. What would I be searching for on Google if I wanted to buy your products or services? Mm -hmm. and if you put yourself in that mindset, you can create a whole mind map of user search intent keywords, the pages you could potentially create, right? You can lay out a, a big, big strategy. And I think you might be in more long term than just asking them, oh, what do you want to rank for? Because they're, they're going to tell you, uh, I want to rank for... Um, best SEO agency in the world. I don't know. Yeah. And how this ties in with Airbnb and all these tools is these tools kind of give you what you want to hear. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you got to step back and really think and investigate by yourself. Um, hopefully this makes sense. <laughs> Love that. So what, what, let's, let's take it back. Like um, um, if for the client that you're talking about and say, how about if they ultimately want to rank for a certain keyword? What do you tell your clients? Like, I oh, I want to rank for this keyword. And you try to say, oh no, you should do this. But you go, I want to rank for this keyword. What, what, I mean, what's your response to that? I mean, I, I'm a proponent that it's, it's possible to rank for every single keyword that you want. Mm -hmm. It takes time and money though. Mm -hmm. uh, so usually clients don't want to 
don't want it to take too much time, neither they have the budget, so we just change the keywords. <laughs> so yeah. Love it, love it. All right, so let's take it. Like you talked about your own tools here, so like, which is going to be about second, the second half of this interview here is about vetted. But I'm curious, like, can you kind of take us to the step of like how where um how vetted came about, like, and you know what it is, because uh, you said uh, ca campaigns cafe is that what it was? That's that's the that's one of the yeah, tools. Yeah, cafe. It's a weird domain name. Yeah. So take us through like first of um, what is vetted uh, SEO marketplace? Kind of like really give us the breakdown of what that is, and then some of the tools that you were providing. Yeah, sure. So it's kind of kind of a long story, but I'll I'll make it short. Um, so when I got into SEO in 2015, mm -hmm. I started with client work, started with an agency, but then I got a bit tired of dealing with clients, mm -hmm. at least Portuguese clients, because it's quite hard because they have super high expectations and sometimes not the, the right budget. So I decided to let me try and productize my services, make mm -hmm. packages out of them. So I went on to Fiverr, Upwork, all these marketplaces, which everyone knows, right? And uh, I was there for a couple of years. Then I joined another marketplace, which I was somewhat successful in. Uh, but then I was, I figured out that there was so many pain points and so many things that I felt were lacking with these marketplaces, mainly being transparency, right? Because you go on Fiverr, everyone hides behind a logo, everyone hides behind a fake name. So I wanted to build something that would uh, convey trust, right? Mm. And I also wouldn't want to compete with Upwork because they're a billion dollar company publicly traded. So instead of targeting every single niche, I decided to target just SEO because it's something I know, something I like. So Vetted was born out of that, uh, out of that, right? An SEO focused marketplace with pre-vetted people. Everyone shows their face. Everyone has their name there. Every single service has samples. So it's super, super transparent. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's how it came about essentially. Love that, love that. Okay, let us let me go ahead and just take uh, a question here from the audience. So we have a few come, that came up from Hobby. I'm just going to pick one here that kind of um, to sum things up here for Hobby. Yes, what are some of the common mistakes made when you're trying to attempt to reverse engineer some SEO tactics? Common mistakes? Uh, that's a good question. Mm, I guess it would be interesting that someone would point out mistakes in my strategies because because when I'm doing the breakdowns, mm -hmm. I don't see any mistakes. Maybe it's just me being a bit arrogant. But give, give me a second to think. Some mistakes. Um, I guess what I said before, relying too much on the data to the data that these tools oh, give yeah. you and not stepping back and thinking for yourself, putting yourself in the customer's shoes. Right. Mm -hmm. That's that's one thing I found valuable. Right. Think of yourself as a customer of this company. And what would you be searching for in order to find the company? I, I found that to be super, super valuable, which is something these tools don't give you, at least for now. Yeah. Love that. You know, when, when you actually have your own um, uh, Facebook group, right? And when you build up a com community of a private group, I mean, it takes take some work there. So I'm, I'm curious, like, uh, if someone wants to even, like, you know, build their own, like, um, Facebook group to, like, where you built it, like, how, what were your kind of steps of like, doing that? That's a big question and a super important one. Because uh, mm -hmm. with all this noise on the internet, it's going to be more and more important to create these little hubs and communities of people, of like-minded mm -hmm. people. Um, I guess it d just takes a lot of time, right? I I've been doing the, I only have 2.5K members and mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing it for a long time. I guess if you're asking the drivers, drivers of growth, sorry, the mm -hmm. biggest one was YouTube. Just okay. put out valuable content about SEO, then do a call to action to the Facebook group. Uh, mm. Yeah, that, that's about it. It's, it's again, everything seems uh, simple, but it's definitely not easy. It takes time. So what came first, vetted or Vasco SEO tips? Uh, Vasco SEO tips was called connect.co before. So I oh, guess the YouTube okay. channel, yeah. So that was, <laughs> so that came first and then vetted came out. And so yeah. I would like to even talk more about that, the whole process. I know you have a whole video on this, on the kind of document and everything, but for those that want to yeah. just kind of get like step-by-step step and launching their own like um, um, business, even just their own business, right? Because in your case, it's an SEO marketplace. I mean, you kind of kind of told us the inspiration behind your, um, about the SEO marketplace. I mean, but, I mean, what other problems did you see you're solving when you're first developing it, right? Because you need to really kind of uh, solve a problem before you uh, start a business, right? So you, you'll know that will be successful. So, I mean, like, how did you, yeah, like, what, sure. yeah, what, what are some of the other some problems that you're trying to solve here? I guess the main problems were, were the ones I mentioned, uh, the lack of transparency that I was seeing yeah. in the industry. So making sure you knew what you were buying and from who you were buying it from. Mm -hmm. And um, there wasn't any, 
SEO marketplace that was this transparent or at least just focused in SEO. Mm -hmm. So I felt like there was a need for it. I felt like we, the community could benefit benefit from it, sorry. Um, so yeah, that's part of the reason why. Essentially super, super simple, I guess, but transparency. Excellent! Yay! Okay, okay, so what... <laughs> <laughs> you got these for everything. <laughs> I told you. You tell you. You asked. You asked for it. I got you, man. All right. So I want. Um, once you had the idea, so you had this idea, um, and you, you know, you were writing it on paper and all that stuff. I mean, like, how did you even go about like finding the right people to work with and getting getting this stuff done? Because I mean, I, it can get expensive if you don't know what you're doing. So like, how did you actually kind of make this into come, become a like reality? True. 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 That's very true. Uh, so I'm. I'm not a developer, so I'm not the technical yeah. co-founder. So I knew I needed to find someone that knew how to code. And uh, mm -hmm. that was not easy at all. At first I was thinking, oh, maybe I should just hire someone in the Middle East, uh, Western Europe, because developers that are cheaper. Thank God I didn't, because uh, I'll explain why in a second. Mm -hmm. But um, I was lucky enough to have a, this mentor that told me, if you want to start a business, start it with someone that it is either a friend or a friend of a friend. And that's super, super valuable because mm -hmm. friends or friends of friends are someone you can trust. And thank God I did it because if I were to have hired someone in the other side of the world, yes, everything could went smoothly, but I wouldn't be able to create a relationship with them mm -hmm. uh, and I trust them 100%. So starting a business is all about trust. I get no mm -hmm. super cliche, but uh, the developer I found, which is now my very good friend, Afonso, uh, was a friend of a friend of mine. And mm -hmm. that was, I think, one of the the biggest success factors is having someone you can trust and build something with for sure love that love that but i mean i think that could also not be the case right because sometimes if you have friends if you hire friends they maybe take advantage of that or um True. yeah so <laughs> i gotta get that, that being said though yeah i think everything can go wrong for sure yeah. that being said though uh, afonso wasn't my friend before he, he ah, became there you a go. friend now so, but yeah every, anything can go wrong that, that's, that's true yeah and will go wrong uh, yeah love that love that some honesty there okay so i want to go into the kind of the the functionality of um like you know the vetted marketplace because i mean how did you even get it did you start it right away because like, you already have some seos on there like did you actually kind of vet, look for seos to join it before you launched i mean kind, kind of take us to the process of getting those those top seo uh, experts on there so I was, I guess, lucky enough to have built this personal brand before launching Vetted. So I had some connections, okay. even, for example, sort of like Bradley Banner yep. was one of them. And so when I launched it, I would already have, would, I would, did already have some people on there before. Um, that being said, we we do have a lot, of, you can apply as an expert, but we decline about 99.9% .9 of the people, mm -hmm. uh, which is a good thing for our buyers, right? Oh, you said uh, you yeah, decline? I guess decline 99%? Decline, sorry. Yeah, oh, decline. oh, do you decline? Because they okay. don't meet our requirements. I mean, okay. people it, it's people not showing their face. Uh, we we require you to submit a video of yourself, like a okay. presentation video. Listen, I'm Basque. I do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. Most of them don't even bother doing that. Uh, so yeah, we decline a lot of them. Uh, but I guess circling back to your question, um, yeah, I was lucky enough to have a personal brand and some connections in the industry. So yeah, because if I didn't have those connections, it would have been a lot harder for sure. So yeah. I guess my advice here is build some sort of community, build some sort of connections in the industry before you build a product. And again, super cliche, but uh, the connections you have are much more valuable than the money you have in your bank account. Much, much more. That's something I realized at least. Yeah. Love that. Love that. So since you kind of talked about it, I mean, I'm curious, what uh, what else is, how do you vet, I mean, vetted, like how do you actually vet your SEOs? Uh, I mean, like what are the things you're looking for? I mean, is there a certain minimum of experience? Uh, I mean, how do you know if they do quality work? Or, or do you actually kind of see what they're doing? Yeah, let us know. How, how, what's your vetted process? Yeah, so it's a, a lot of factors. Um, okay. the, the first one is, can you be transparent enough and show your face, which mm -hmm. a lot of people can't. Nothing wrong with that. It's just not something that we want to work with. So that's the first one. Um, then do you have a portfolio of tangible results, right? We, we make you a plot of portfolio. Uh, show the before and after, show what you did, who was the client, all that. We dive deep. Then something else super, super important is, are you not brandable, but can you put yourself out there? Do you have a LinkedIn? Do you mm -hmm. look professional on, on your LinkedIn? Do you have a bio? Do you have a bio? Do you care about your social presence? Because at least for me nowadays, that's super, super important. How you present yourself online mm -hmm. is at least how people perceive your, your, your value. Mm -hmm. it might be a bit shallow, yes. Are there SEOs that uh, don't show their face and are amazing? Yes, definitely. But um, 
but I mean, that's just how we work. Then, yeah, skills assessment, personality assessment. Can you speak English properly? It's a big one for us, right? And um, essentially, that's about it. Um, yeah, about it. Love that. Okay, so, I mean, how's, how do, does everyone get paid? I mean, what's kind of like the, I mean, is there a certain split between you guys or is there a commission or did you take a cut? Like, how, how does that structure work with, with your professionals that are on there and the people that are kind of, you know, uh, yeah. the, the max place? We just take a cut from, mm. from the experts and, um, yeah, and the buyers as well. Instead of taking everything from the expert, we thought, huh, let's take a bit from one side, a bit from the other side. And we still have the lowest fees in the industry, so that's good. Um, so yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, so wait, so you so you take well, yeah, you pretty much take it right when they pay for it, right? So when someone buys something, you just take a cut that and they get their cut. That pretty much. Um, yeah. Brian asked. I remember Connect Connect uh, Connectco like five years ago. I'm going to check out Vetted now. So you, yeah, you've had, so you have Connect. Tell me more about that, because I mean, actually, I only found out about Connect uh, when I was doing research on you, and like, I'm curious about that, because you said that actually came before that. So what was Connect about, and is it still live right now? Yeah, it's uh, it was like my my personal site. So I had to have a site, right? I called my YouTube Connect. I created a site called Connect. My Facebook group was called Connect, and then I rebranded the Facebook group to Vasco, oh. my YouTube channel to Vasco, and the. Uh, the site connect site just there and when i upload a video to youtube it gets automatically up uploaded to the site as well but I, I don't really use it main focus now is just better okay um, and yeah <laughs> love that and then of course vetted has actually you have some actually more arms of vetted there's some other stuff that you're developing right you got some tools going on there what, what else is, is vetted offering besides like this marketplace yeah uh we have I guess a competitor to Ahrefs, not even close, but it's called campaigns.cafe. Cafe is a domain extension, mm -hmm. which essentially is a rank tracker mixed with an SEO data tool. It's pretty cool. I use it in my some of my case studies because mm -hmm. it's good enough that you can actually use it. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, we do have like a, a special coupon or a special deal for you guys. I guess I'll talk about that later on. Um, no, you can talk about it now. Let, also, me put the link. Let me put the uh, link okay, here. Sure. Yeah. I put the link. I put so, the link, guys. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah there's a, a free trial i think for seven days unfortunately i wasn't able to create a coupon just now however you have my word that if you subscribe you get the seven days and then we'll extend it for another 30 days so you get a free month free uh if you don't like it at the end of the 30 days you can just cancel it we'll give your money back so yeah free access to it for 30 days money back guarantee uh yeah that's it that's exactly the exact tool i use in my case studies you get access to their back uh, to you uh, sorry you get access to the urls backlinks competitors top pages top keywords mm -hmm. and a rank tracker as well one thing that's pretty cool is that uh, you can just put one of your competitors links there and you can just track their backlinks and copy their backlinks so pretty neat mm -hmm. so, yeah Damn! Damn! Man, love that. So you guys, you got a free month of campaign, cam, campaigns.cafe. Go over there. You get unlimited tracking of keywords and you can see some of the um, uh, uh, other like insights that you get from, from other tools all right there. You can get it for free for 30, for 30 days. So be sure to check that out, campaigns.cafe. We had a, um, we have here, someone saying hi. We had uh, Kamran says, hey, Vasco, really loved your journey. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it. If you guys got any more questions, please ask them in the live chat uh, while I, while I kind of go down for uh, you know, further down my few of my questions I have left here. Um, so when, when, when you actually started launching your, your, your marketplace, all right, you got your vetted SEOs, you got your people. how did you get your, the other side of the marketplace the, the your buyers? How do you get, how, how did you start promoting that? Like how did, you know, people start getting there? Yeah, that's a very good question because a, a marketplace business is one of the hardest businesses to scale, scale right? Because you got to focus mm -hmm. on the supply and on the demand. So it's tricky because it's the chicken and egg problem. Uh, you have the supply, but you have no demand without supply and you have no supply without demand. So what I did was try and onboard at first um, professionals that I knew had already a somewhat personal brand that mm -hmm. they could uh, call in. For example, we have a guy named oh. Tony Peacock. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. He was on, well, yeah, I think you know him, right? Yep. He was on very early and uh, he had a personal brand, Bradley Banner as well, myself. Um, so yeah, try on board these, I guess, influencers that could bring part of the, the demand. Mm -hmm. Also, very important to keep on promoting, it, keep on pumping out content, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all that ads. We haven't done much ads, honestly, maybe we should do more, mm -hmm. uh, but it's running a marketplace is a constant promotion. 
a constant, I guess any business, but yeah, I just this is the only one I know, um, a constant promotion of the both sides. Because you can never neglect one side, right? Because if you neglect mm -hmm. one side, the other is going to be neglected as well. So you got to be, there's got to be a, a solid balance between both, I guess. Yep. Yep. Love that, love that. And if you get into ads, I highly recommend doing some video ads. Video ads are so cheap, especially if you have your own YouTube channel. You can do a lot of retargeting there. So um, if you want to get into ads, I highly recommend doing some some video ads. That's some really, really good. So you can get some really, really okay. good some returns there. So check that one out. Um, if, if you, so I'm curious now with... with uh, what are some of the, some of the other like milestones you have? Like, can you like you, you launched the site first? You got you know you had the idea, you um, executed the idea, created the marketplace. You got some people on there. Now you're getting some um, you know, more people to you know, purchase services. I mean, so what are some other milestones that you're looking for within the future of like the whole marketplace? Yeah, we want to ramp up the consulting aspect of it because oh. on, on Better you can pay for a, a ex expert skills by purchasing their services. And also you can pay for their time by booking consulting calls. Uh, mm -hmm. And we want to ramp that up a bit more because uh, it's, for example, it's super valuable to have Bradley Banner on there. You can just mm -hmm. pay for his time and book a call with him. Tony mm -hmm. Peacock, uh, mm -hmm. I guess myself. We want to bet a bit more on that because from what I found, there's no niche place for SEO where you can just pay to talk with an SEO that actually has a, a track record of uh, success. So that's something we want to bet on for sure. Uh, what else? I guess that's the main one for now. Yeah, I'll keep the rest secret. You could tell us um, a couple secret ones. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's cool. So I mean, is there any other tools that you plan on developing, or is it just kind of you're going to be kind of like um, anything coming more on on the campaign side of 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 you know better? Are you going to increase? Are going to actually fix that one up a little more too? Yeah, yeah, we're always working. So the campaigns like Cafe is going to be revamped. We just revamped the UI a bit, so mm -hmm. we're, we're keeping on improving it on a daily basis. Uh, I guess since you asked, we do have a lot, another one called journalist.cafe, which is an AI tool. Okay. Uh, super short, allows you to create content, auto post it to a blog. Uh, it's pretty cool with images and all that. Uh, I, I don't want to promote it too much, but yeah, journalist.cafe, that's another tool we have. Okay, um, journalist. Okay. And I guess if I can talk about this, so oh, yeah. having built a marketplace, which is essentially a, a director, right? A mm -hmm. place where you aggregate curated or vetted things. I found, and my prediction is that for the future of business, that we're going to go down a road where the most successful businesses and the hardest ones to disrupt are going to be directory style businesses like marketplaces or listing sites. Mm -hmm. For example, Airbnb, their value is not in the code. I mean, it is valuable, but you can purchase the uh, knockoff Airbnb code for, I don't know, $500 and have a site like Airbnb. Their value is in the community, is in the supply they have, right? And it's very, very hard to disrupt. So my, my thoughts moving forward in business is that businesses that succeed in creating this network effect and these directory style marketplace type of businesses will be the biggest ones. Mm -hmm. That being said, that is why we just launched something else called onlinedeer.co, uh, which is exactly that, right? A tool that allows you to launch a marketplace directory type site in just a few seconds. Um, so oh. yeah, that's a bit of promo to, to that tool as well. Online deer .com. Online deer. Uh, so online dir dot com. Yeah. Dot co. Dot com. Oh, dot co. Uh, online deer yeah. dot co. Weird so, domain, so, I know. Yeah. So that's <laughs> gonna be more of a pretty much a, um, a, a pretty much a vetted marketplace. Is that what it is? Like it's a marketplace that you can launch on your own. It's a tool that allows you to create directory as a marketplaces ah. because based on all the experience that I've acquired for the past year and the past other years. And my prediction for the future is that these types of businesses are the ones that are going to, that are going to succeed because they're very hard to disrupt. So, mm. so yeah. Now, let me just, we're just starting it out, just validating the idea. So it's quite new. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is, it's, I see this here. That's interesting. So one, it's a lifetime license, you get a lifetime license, one directory website. Interesting. So this is actually coming at an at a, um, interesting time because I've been hearing a lot more about uh, um, directories and using them as a, as lead gen, um, yeah. gateways for you know people for even for seo stuff so i'm curious like how is this kind of this online directory uh is it like a wordpress base is it on its own is it its own cms like i'm curious like tell me more about it because i'm actually wanting to get into this type of um, business myself <laughs> yeah no it's uh, it's super cool man I, and i do think it's i mean it's my product right but i do think it's a future future sorry uh, not wordpress not cms it's custom custom okay. code it's gonna be like a tool uh custom dashboard all that uh super customizable um yeah so that yeah, that deal, that lifetime deal is just something we're doing just to get some pre-sales first. And we're launching August 
first, I think. Uh, you can, I mean, if you purchase now, mm -hmm. you know, don't like it when you launch, we launch, sorry, we give you the money back. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's interesting that you're hearing more and more about this because I really think that's going to be the future of the directory. Uh, essentially, places where you aggregate curated yep. people, mm -hmm. I mean, like SEOs, for example, yep. things, products, services, it's the new wave. <laughs> no, no, I already have a bunch of domains that I want to turn into directories. Like, I'm, so I, I'm, I'm actually like looking for the right directory um, um, uh, platform uh, that's out there. So I'm, like, I'm, I'm actually scoping some stuff out and like checking out some people's courses and stuff like that. So I'm definitely gonna check yours cool. out. Um, so I want to make sure, you know, if you have any beta access, let me know. Uh, <laughs> I want to get in there and play with it. Um, yeah. So enough about me, what I want. But let's see here. We have uh, uh, Cameron says, do you plan to add a job board section for SEO job placements? That's a good question. Um, the answer is no, at mm -hmm. least for now, uh, because it's a breathing ground for spam, even though we could um, like close it. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the I'm a pro pro proponent of keeping things simple. Mm -hmm. So in theory, if you wanted to do something custom, uh, you could just message, for example, Bradley Banner on there and ask him, hey, listen, can you do this, this and that? And mm -hmm. He would just tell you. Um, but yeah, we, we could definitely do it. We could fill up Vettel with different features, cool things, but we like to keep it super clean and just add it when it's expressly necessary. And you're the first person to mention it. Maybe some more will. Uh, and it's an interesting idea for sure. But as of now, uh, not yet. <laughs> There you go, Cameron. Not right now. Maybe in the future. All right. So, I mean, I want to go ahead. And so you, we kind of talked about, like, you know, the future of this stuff. I'm kind of like, I'm actually, like, really curious more about this directory thing here. Uh, can you, like, tell me more <laughs> about it? Because uh, are, are you going to really have it uh, breaking down where you can have your own blogs on there? Um, you know, you can push your own content. So it's like, you know, and, and like, will it be, like, really, really user friendly? I mean, like, tell me more about this project because now I'm really interested yeah. in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good good thing you ask. So the two main things we're going to focus on is first is monetization monetization first, right? Because you can have a directory, yeah. but the goal is to make money with it, right? So yeah. right off the start, have people be able to purchase listings, featured listings, and a bunch of other stuff. That's the main thing, monetization first. Mm -hmm. The second thing is you can have the most prettiest directory ever, beautiful with a lot of listings, but uh, if no one's going there, you're not going to make any money. Yep. So we're going to do it so it's SEO first, right? It's going to be mm -hmm. fully SEO optimized with the blog and all that. Be and because with the learnings we've, we've, uh, I have in SEO from better than a bunch of other people that surround us, the goal is to make this, again, money focused and traffic focused with the blog. We have some ideas for auto posting with videos, with the content you post on there. So the whole goal is to create a money making asset because at the end mm -hmm. of the day, it is an asset, right? Yep. Um, so yeah, hopefully this answers the question. <laughs> Love that. So how about um, like when it comes to directories, will you have the ability to like, let's say import like certain things? Like, I mean, are you, is this going to be have to manual or can you like do some mass imports of like certain things to like kind of seed the yeah. directory? Is that going to be like one of the yeah, features you can you mass going import on? anything you want. Yeah. You oh. can mass import any list you want. Yeah. People, product, services, images, all that. <laughs> Love it. So is this also going to be a, like a script that we download and upload to our own servers? Or are you going to be hosting it? Is this kind of a SaaS thing? Um, like, like kind of the, how's that uh, kind of work? Yeah, we host it, but you can put it on your, on your own domain. So okay. yeah, that's fine. We just host it because I think it's safer. Uh, but uh, I mean, if people want to host it themselves, they can. Yeah, Got sure. it. Got it, got it. All right, all right, guys. Go ahead and please ask your questions here in, uh, in the live chat because we're coming close to the very end. Uh, I think I've covered pretty much everything here because you, you wanted to even talk about, um, we talked about the future of like how you see like, you know, the businesses here in the future of SEO. I mean, I mean what do you actually do see the future of SEO uh, um, as? Good question. A lot of people say or have been saying that it's going to die. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that informational-based content is going to be wiped out a bit so for example uh, yeah if you search for a question nowadays i find myself using chat gpt more and more for mm -hmm. example uh, yesterday i was having a bug with webflow and instead of going to the forums and mm -hmm. looking for it i just asked chat gpt and what it does is it'll just script the forms for my answer and give me a step-by-step -step list so i think for informational type of helpful content uh seo sites that do that are ranking for that is gonna, are going to lose a bunch of traffic but seo itself uh, optimizing for a search engine, I don't see it ever going away because mm -hmm. as long as you have search engines, whether that's YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Google, Bing, whatever new search engine that pop up, 
you're always going to have ways to optimize for it. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I, I don't see it going away anytime soon as long as humans use uh, search to find stuff. And uh, one thing I found also is people that have access to this, to this new Google AI search engine have found that for some of the things they search, they find themselves not looking at the AI generated answer and just going down and scrolling and clicking on the actual human websites to find human related experiences. Even though, of course, these AI take uh, the text they show you from humans, mm -hmm. it's different. It has a personal touch. So yeah, I don't think don't see it going anywhere anytime soon, which is good for us. <laughs> Love that. I didn't see any other questions come in to, um, through the live chat. Or let me look on LinkedIn, see if anyone, no one on LinkedIn. So I want to ask my last question that I I'll ask all my SEO professionals that come on here. Um, if someone wants to get into the SEO game, become whether it's an uh, SEO professional, an SEO entrepreneur, or just do anything SEO, what would your advice be to them? Yeah, I, I guess I would advise them to do what I did, which is buy a domain, no, pick a niche, mm -hmm. buy a domain and start doing stuff. Start doing stuff because that's the only way, literally the only way you're going to get better at anything. Super cliche, I know, but uh, that worked for me and I do think that works for anyone else that wants to try it out. So yeah, buy a domain. Love it. Love it. So, I mean, for you to have this episode feel complete, I mean, what, any last comments and how can people uh, get a hold of you? Uh, I guess if you want to get a hold of me, I, I'm very active on Twitter. So okay. it's Vasco ABM, V A S C O ABM. Uh, I do also have, I have this YouTube channel, Vasco's SEO Tips, but I have a more of an entrepreneurial channel, entrepreneurial, sorry, entrepreneurial channel called Vasco Monteiro, my, my name, mm -hmm. where I share more business tips, a bit more serious channel, which is, I think it's cool. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I guess if I had to leave everyone with a piece of knowledge, um, uh, I guess I'd like to say surround yourself with more knowledgeable people. Super cliche. Again, I'm, I'm saying this a lot, but uh, yeah, it's the cliche stuff is the real stuff. So surround yourself with smarter people and uh, just get to work because uh, yeah, that's how you're going to succeed. Love that. Love that. So I want to go ahead. Uh, can you go ahead and hold on for, hold on for just one quick second here yep. while I um, s sign off. Let me go ahead and sign off here. All right. Let's see here. All right, guys, that concludes another episode of the SEO Video Show. Please support the channel by liking, subscribing, and hitting that notification bell. And I will see you next week. Peace out. Thank you for watching. Hope you come back next week. Make sure to subscribe. You don't want to miss a thing. Hope you learn something new because the vibe is incredible. From the special SEO professionals, SEO video show. Let's work. Want to see you be an SEO expert. Paul Andre DeVera helping you step it up. No delay right now. Time to level up. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Woo!